The topic for today is going to be how to fabricate a rain cap, also called a weather cap. The first thing we do is we draw the front elevation of this cap. Now there are some things we need to know when making a weather cap. You'll notice the bottom is a four inch pipe. It's called the stack or the main pipe. The weather cap on top of it must be twice the size of the stack. Therefore it's eight inches. The space in between the cap and the stack should be equal to half of the stack diameter. And all rain caps should have a slope of 30 degrees. And there's a few different ways to find 30 degrees. I just use my protractor. I can also use a compass and I will show you shortly. So erect a 90 degree line at the end or the beginning of your eight inch and use your compass like we have been shown throughout your school year to find a 30 degree. So choose any distance, draw a quarter circle strike this arc to find 30 degrees. Remember, your dividers are equal to 60 degrees when drawing a circle. So you can see here, same thing. We've achieved a 30 degree Here I am going to also demonstrate another method is by using trigonometry. We know we want 30 degrees slope for the top cap. So what I've done here is I've said tangent 30 degrees times half, which is four, equals 2.309. So now I'm going to draw a 90 degree perpendicular exactly in the center of the 8 inch, 2.309, which is approximately 2 and 5 sixteenths. Once you've located that point, you can now connect to the ends of your caps and you should have a 30 degree angle. Again, that was tangent 30 times four would give you your opposite, which was 2.309. And let's go ahead, check out and see if we have 30 degrees. So now this cap needs to be fastened to the stack using legs, brackets. Um, so here you can see I am using an angle, 90 degree angle, coming off the cap where it meets the stack. That's how long the bracket needs to be. For this cap, I'm gonna be using four brackets. Now let's go ahead and start the pattern. Set your compass to A, C, which is the slant side of the right cone. Now scribe a circle. This is A, C. It's not eight inches. 
it is the radius of AC. And the radius of AC is 4.61, if you could read the steel square. So your slant length is 4.61. Therefore, the diameter of that circle is technically 9.22, 9.22. So here you've seen, I have the pattern of what it's gonna look like. So let me demonstrate what I did to generate this pattern. Again, I took line AC and we drew the outside circle. I'm setting my compass from A to B simply to locate where my legs or the brackets are going to be positioned when I fabricate this cap. Now we need to figure out the cutout. The cutout is basically a section of this circle that needs to re be removed. So I'm setting my dividers to four inches on the bottom because I went halfway through the cap. So I'm subtracting four from 4.61. And that leaves me with X equal to 0.61 times 6.28 would equal 3.83 inches. That needs to be removed on the outside circumference of this cap. The 6.28 is a constant, meaning no matter what size a cap, you will always be using X times 6.28. Therefore, to recap what I just did, to find the cutout, subtracting my radiuses, I took the 4.61 was my slant radius, and the four inch is half the diameter of the cap. I then multiplied that 0.61 times 6.28 to give me my 3.83 cutout. A second way to find the cutout is by subtracting the diameters. My pattern diameter is 9.22 and the cap is finished diameter is 8 inch. Therefore that would leave me with 9.22 minus 8 equals 1.22 times pi would equal 3.83 as your cutout. And the third way is to subtract circumferences. We know if the pattern circumference is 9.2 diameter times pi equals 28.96, and the finish cap is eight times pi, you subtract one from the other and you would get 3.83 as your cutout. So now that we've found three different ways to find our cutout of 3.83, I'm using a piece of metal, 3.83 inches long, and I'm adding the outside pattern where I will be removing this section to create the cone. I'm also leaving a seam, a half inch seam, so I can spot weld my cap. So at the moment, you see me, because I need four legs, I am positioning where the brackets need to be, or these legs. So what I did is I bisected these two angles. So once I bisected that angle, 
and I'm just gonna check to see if there's four equal spots or spaces. It's one. Looks good. So this space, let me walk it around one more time. So this ensures me that when I spot weld my cap together, these spaces are equally divided. Now I need to make a stack or the four inch collar. So the four inch collar also, you're gonna to need to put a uh, seam on it. For this scenario, I'm putting a half inch lap seam and I'm adding three quarters on the bottom for a bead later on. But more importantly is your half inch lap seam plus your four inch circumference. And then divide that circumference into four equal spaces. Again, this is to locate your legs or brackets when you go to assemble. Now these brackets as you can see, I'm allowing a half inch to be spot welded to the cap. The slant is two and three quarters. And I'm also allowing three quarters of an inch to be spot welded to the stack. So because I got light gauge metal, I'm going to uh, bend on each side 180 degrees to reinforce or create a stronger leg. I could use heavy gauge metal So right now I scratched a half inch on top, three quarter inches on the bottom, and I'm coming in a quarter inch. And this quarter inch will be bent over 180 degrees to stiffen the bracket. I'm gonna need four of these. So these are the pieces that you need to complete the rain cap. So now I'm going to go to the roller and right now I'm just simply running the cap through the rollers in a few different way directions to soften the metal to allow me to Pull it together. Once you've got it pulled together, and you'll notice my half inch lap seam, I gave it a small kink. It just helps in the fabrication or spot welding. Now once you've manipulated it enough, I advise to add a set of vice grips. Make sure the metal is nice and tight. As tight as you can without damaging the cap. Go to the spot welder. I would recommend going in the center. Now the stack, again, I have a half inch lap seam. Here are my brackets. I'm gonna bend these quarter inches over 180 degrees. And you can bend it on the brake. I'm using a bar folder. Uh, you can use your, you can use the cheek bender. Uh, there's many tools that you can use to bend that. Now the cap. Uh, I'm simply stating here that these are where the legs, or the brackets need to go. 
they will line up with the stack, which is marked in four different areas. I've included the marks to show you better what I have been doing. So the marks are on the inside and the outside. Typically, you try to keep everything on the inside. So now I'm going to go ahead and spot weld my brackets to the cap. And remember, look for your markings on where the legs go. And you might notice that I added a bead to my cap. That's just me, I'm a sort of a bead freak. And um, at the same time, the bead tells me where to start my leg or position the legs of the brackets. Now that the four legs are spot welded, be careful, it's still warm. Open up the legs. Depending on the angle of your brackets, you, you may need, or you will need to kink these slightly for a better fit onto the stack. And as you can see, because we marked the stack, or we divided it up into four equal spaces, I know exactly where to spot weld the legs onto the stack. And again, the bead on the bottom acts as a stop for the brackets.